Okay, Scott here. Today we're going to go over the most killer sided map and the most survivor sided map in Dead by Daylight and address how they can possibly be changed because they are utterly ridiculous and it's basically a guaranteed win or loss depending on whatever role you're playing at that time. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to go with the first one, which is Batam Preschool. This is the most survivor sided realm in the entire game and it has been since Freddy came out. Batam Preschool has legitimately been the most insanely survivor sided realm for most of the game's lifespan, and it shows no sign of slowing down. Now, there's a couple of things you can look at when looking at Bad and Preschool to see how insanely problematic it is. Here's Bad and Preschool 2. There's five variants of this nightmare, by the way. Here's Bad and Preschool 2. I mean, I've shown this before. This is a standard setup with Bad and Preschool 2. You will have Shack right here, and connected to Shack is a loop there, and a loop there, and a loop here, and then one behind those trees, and usually one right there. So, yep. So we have five loops literally three feet away from shack this is one of the most busted setups in the entire game it is ridiculous now a lot of these pallets aren't super strong but the point is you can chain these all together with the shack to form basically an uncatchable area depending on your killer obviously if you have someone with a very strong anti-loop it can be um, a bit easier but like the loops leading into window and stuff like that this is just super common on this map but that's not even the main issue with Badem Preschool. That This is just Badem Preschool 2. The main issue with Badem is there is nowhere on the map that is good for me to take a chase. That is the main problem with it. For example, most main buildings are really strong, but there's only one main building. So if you've got Dead Dog Saloon, you just don't chase people into the main building. There's still an entire three-fourths of the map that you can just chase people that are way, way weaker than the main building. And so it's not a big deal. So main buildings being strong is not an issue. The problem is Batam has three main buildings. So no matter where I punch somebody, they will be able to speed burst to the school. They can speed burst to the two-story section. They can speed burst to the shack or they can speed burst to the, uh, the basement building. No matter where I hit somebody, it's a bad chase to take. That is the worst part about it. So if I had to articulate why Batam is so ridiculously strong for Survivor is everywhere is a main building. Everywhere on the map has the strength of a main building, which makes it ridiculous. And the Batam preschool itself, the, uh, the uh, loop with the fence right here going around, you can get around this usually two, maybe three times, depending if you have life or something like that. Um, and that's not even accounting for the two god pallets downstairs that you cannot do anything about as killer. Um, this is the strongest of the main buildings, but there's still a god pallet in there. Um, the pallet up here is not as strong, but the breakable walls must be broken to chase people. So those are essentially pre-dropped god pallets. That's my point. No matter where you go, it's a bad chase to take in Batman Preschool, and that is why it is the most survivor-sided realm in the game. Now, it's not necessarily the most survivor-sided map. When I say realm, I mean a grouping of maps in one realm. You could argue sometimes that like Garden of Joy or maybe a really bad Eerie of Crows is better, but I, I wouldn't agree with that. I legitimately think Bad and Preschool is the hardest map realm everything to win on as killer. Almost all of my losses are on Bad and Preschool. I know that sounds very stupid, but that's legitimately... It causes me to lose so many games because there's just nothing I can do because every chase is at a very, very strong structure. There's no dead zone to make. Everywhere is good for survivors on this map. Those bots are having a rough time there. And so that is bad in preschool. It has been like this for the entirety of the game's existence for the most part. And I really, really wish they would make this a bit more uh, balanced. And how would you do that? I, you would legit have to remove one of the main buildings. I think that's what you would do. And since you have five variations, you could have, hey, you know, Batam 2 doesn't have this building, but it's got these two. Or Batam 3 doesn't have that building, but it's got this one and this one. You could do something like that. You sort of had and field it, but not nearly as strict because had and field just became incredibly killer sided now. So just some kind of balance like that. That would also create some nice variations in the map to where, you know, certain maps would have certain buildings and certain wouldn't have other ones. So I think that would be the way to address better in preschool. But for now, yeah, this is like guaranteed loss unless you're playing a very good killer or the survivors are absolutely terrible. And that should not be the case. Now, as far as the most killer sided map, I briefly talked about it, but it's it's Haddonfield. The new Haddonfield is stupidly easy to win on as killer. Now, this map has had a history of being insanely broken in favor of the survivors, but they went massively overboard with the, like, fourth version of this map, and it is basically dead zone central. There is 
in contrast to bad in preschool, there's essentially nowhere good on this map for survivors. Like, these buildings used to be individually really, really brokenly strong, to be fair. The windows, they had multiple god windows per building. But now, you don't really have any of those anymore. You got this pallet, which might as well not even exist. Uh, the windows are just not good anymore. Does this one even have a fucking window? This one doesn't even have a window. So you can sometimes get a variant where there's like a, a window here, but then there's a wall you can walk through right here. So it's not really a big deal. This is even a, a bad variation of that. This window is pretty much terrible. If you're chasing from this side, like that is not, <laughs> that is not a big way to go out of the way to, you know, not have to vault that. Honestly, you could probably vault it and have it in the exact same time. Pretty much the only good pallet is downstairs here. Um, and that's it. That's the only good pallet, I think, on the entire map. Uh, everything else, the windows have been so severely nerfed now to where, like, okay, whatever, I just go here. Like, and I'm two feet away from him. Like, they don't even accomplish anything anymore. And trust me, this map was insanely, insanely survivor-sided for most of its lifespan, but they went so overkill with just removing every single good window. There used to be an entire other building right here. They just chopped off this section of the map there's just nothing here anymore. It's a dead zone. And so there used to be a another, you know, very safe structure here. And th there's just nothing. Survivors have literally nothing to use on this entire map. And the only way it can actually be a little decent is if they have balanced landing. Balanced landing can actually make you loop the house one time, pretty much. Um, other than that, though, all of these little filler pallets are pretty not safe, depending on, you know, what killer you are. For example, for Nemesis, I get hits every time at these pallets, no matter what. Um, there is a pallet right here that is arguably safe, but you can also just go around it if they keep running. So it's, honestly, it's really not that safe. Now this is a bot, so it can see me through walls. So it's a bit different, but you know what I mean? It's not really, uh, there's just no good sections of the map whatsoever. So how do we fix this? It's a bit more complicated. I'm scared of this map for a lot of reasons, because I have killer PTSD, because again, it used to be for 90% of its lifespan, extremely survivor-sided. They could go a bit more generous and maybe add this building back. I feel like the map is too small now. I can walk across from one side to the other in 15 seconds. Like that's, that's it's a very, very tiny map. They could probably remove what they did here, put another house here again, but keep the houses at the same strength uh, that the new houses are, where they just have like one semi-okay window and some like kind of filler palette, and then that's basically it. I think giving a bit more room there in this giant dead zone would make it a lot safer because if you're hit in like anywhere in this third of the map, you don't have anywhere to go. You just, just die. And I think that needs to be addressed because yeah, this map is essentially a free one on killer every single time. Um, and it's just because there's just really nothing for survivors to work with here. Um, but those are the most survivor-sided and killer-sided map. I don't know why I said those. They are uh, the most survivor-sided and killer-sided maps. Now, I don't know really how to address fixing that other than what I said. I just wanted to really point it out more than anything to uh, kind of indicate to the devs that, hey, these are massively problematic. I'm really curious what the escape and kill rates are on the on these maps, like, respectively, because they do seem, uh, like, really... If I get this map, I'm like, I win. If I get bad in preschool, I'm like, I lose. You should never load into a game and have a predetermined outcome based on the map itself. Most maps are not so wildly balanced one side or the other anymore, and the game is in a much better you know, map balancing point, I would have to say. Um, but these are such massive outliers that it literally seals your fate the second you load into it. And that's just a huge problem. So um, that is pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.